Hey, what's up, YouTube? How's everybody doing? So, we're here in Visual Studio Code uh, in Platform IO, which we've added in here. If you need, again, I am not an expert in Marlin. Uh, so, if you need expert Marlin videos, go watch Chris Riley's video, uh, all his many videos on Marlin 2.0. So, uh, go find Chris's basement. He's got a whole bunch of amazing videos. They're all about Marlin 2.0. But what we're going to do here is we're going to take the uh, approach of let's follow along with the Chris. And let's go ahead and set up an SKR version 1.4 turbo. And yeah, uh, we'll do it step by step. And we'll talk about all the little features we're going to add. I got my cheat sheet next to me. Let me just make sure my cheat sheet doesn't go to standby mode at any time. So let me go to my display and brightness settings and turn auto lock completely off. All right, now my auto lock won't turn on. And we'll go back to my cheat sheet. Hope everyone is having a fabulous Monday. Unless you're in Australia, it might actually be Tuesday. I think it is actually Tuesday out there. I have 35 minutes after midnight. Oh boy, people, oh yeah, that's right, eight hours. So it's if you're in Europe, it's also the next day. So, for you Europeans, you'll probably watch this in replay. So let's not take too long here. So the way I... Uh, this will this will differ a little bit. Chris Riley will make a new project and whatnot. Um, I go to File, Open Folder, and I've already made a new folder here in my Marlin Builds folder for what we're doing here. So I'm doing a uh, Prusa Bear. So it's basically just a Prusa in a much sturdier frame. So it's a Mark III S with a fancier frame. So we're going to have a filament sensor. We're going to have a Pinda probe. We're going to have all that fun stuff. Um, we're also going to have a... You broke two bones. Jacob, stop breaking two bones in your legs. That's illegal. Uh, let's go ahead and open up this folder. We're going to click on here, and we're going to select that folder, and we're going to open it. And this will open our fancy goodness here. And I zoomed in this time, so hopefully people can see it better. But we're going to go to platform io.ini first. And the first thing we need to do is change the default environment that we're building in. So basically you just need to know what chipset your board has. The SKR version 1.4 is an LPC 1768. The turbo version, so the SKR 1.4 turbo, is the LPC 17... Oops. 1769. Nice. Oop, and I even spelled that wrong. So LPC 1769. And as you type, it'll usually show so LPC. And you'll see LPC 1769 pop up. It's pretty cool that it does that. Uh, so that's all you need to change there. So that will set the environment up to work correctly with the, um, the board where we're going to do. The next thing we have to do is hop over to Marlin and we're going to go to configuration.h. And 90% of everything we're doing is going to be in config.h and configuration underscore advanced.h. So let's take a look at here. What do we have to change? Some simple stuff here. So you're going to put your name in here because you are the author of this. And again, you don't have to do this part. And I like to just do this because if I share stuff, you can be like, oh yeah, that guy did it. And the default config is going to be an SKR version 1.4. Again, I'm trying to be kind of descriptive when I do these. Turbo. BMG and 1.8. So it's basically saying that this is for an SKR 1.4 turbo board with the BMG extruder, which I have on this printer. And it has a 1.8 degree motor on that because uh, one of mine has a 0 0.9. So I like to, you know, differentiate the two. Uh, show boot screen is fine if you undefine this, which is just putting two little backslashes here or forward slashes. Um, all that will do is hide the boot screen. So it won't say Marlin, whatever, whatever. Uh, I leave that on. Uh, we will leave serial port zero, but we'll also undefine or define serial port number two. We're going to change the baud rate to 11.5200. And the only reason is I'm most likely going to swap this board or this uh, on this printer. I'm going to swap the screen from a standard LDO screen, which we're going to set up to a TFT 3.5. So when I do that, it tends to work a little bit more stable at that baud rate. This way, I don't have to go back and recompile firmware. Um, you know, and forget this because I need that. Let's see if this new feature works. So if I highlight the board and right-click, um, 
go to declaration. Yay, that works. So that will take you to where the board is declared. And we're going to scroll down and find our fancy board. So we need to find the SKR version 1.4 turbo. So LP69, there it is. So we're going to select this. Control C that. We'll go back to Marlin's configuration.h. And again, the quick way of getting to your board, if you ever need to do that, is just right click it and go to the declaration. That'll shoot you right to where it's declared. So that way you can go through the, um, the finding whatever you need. So whatever boards you need will be in the boards list. You don't have to go find where the board list is. It's kind of neat. So back to config.h. We're going to paste. Make sure we save that. Yep. So there's our board. Board Big Tree SKR version 1 underscore 4 underscore turbo. So there's that part. Next up is a custom machine name. So we're going to call this... And this is just going to be, again, on the main screen. When you're looking at the screen, it will have the little name of the printer at the bottom left-hand corner. So we'll call this the SKR Mark III S version 1.4 Turbo. Because, you know, Turbo just means better. And again, there's... If you guys are wondering what the difference is, it's just a faster processor. So the, the version 1.4 is 100 megahertz, the turbo is 120 megahertz. Not a huge difference, just some people are going to ask me. Um, if you have multiple of the same board on the same network, so like I use Repetier server so I can plug in, you know, six printers in the same Pi. Sometimes they don't like because there's no unique identifier. This is a big issue with the MKS Gen L. Literally, they just gave the same. Uh, a USB descriptor on every single USB port. So you couldn't find which printer was which. If you click on this link, or not click on it, but if you you know copy this link and paste it into a browser, it'll send you to a website. They'll give you a new UID, and you can undefine this and do that. I'm not going to do that for you guys, but maybe I'll do a video specifically on that. Next up is to change the filament diameter to 1.75 millimeters, because guess what? Our printer takes 1.75 millimeter filament. So as we scroll, I'm going to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, we don't do anything here. I believe our next section is going to be either thermistors or some other weird nonsense. So let's keep scrolling. So yeah, here's our thermistors list. So if you're using a stock Prusa printer, it uses a E3D thermistor on the hot end and a uh, 100K thermistor, which is number one, on the bed. So number five is what uh, the E3D is, 100K ATC Semitech. If you have the bed, it's a one. So we just scroll down, define temp sensor with zero. It's going to be five. And our bed sensor is going to be one. Uh, we also, on the Prusa, because this has a Pinda, has a temp sensor in the probe. We've got it working. So we're going to define that. And we'll do some magic to make that work here later. Uh, don't need any of this value don't need any of this. So again, if you're using a BL touch, don't put one here. Just leave that zero. Uh, we're going to change this temp window to three degrees and eight. So I've seen some false positives because I have a really powerful fan on mine. So that's something we change because uh, sometimes we'll drop the temp and it'll throw a min temp error. And then I'm mad because it really isn't a min temp error. Just my bed is cooling a little bit quicker because my fan turned on. Um, so you can change that there, and there's another section in configuration advanced.h that we change, but we'll skip this because these are all good. Five is good. Now our max on our Prusa will be 295. Remember, so technically our, our max is lower than that, um, at least sustained. The Mark 3s uses a standard E3D V6 with an aluminum block. The aluminum block is only rated to 275C max print rate. It can heat up higher but there's not a long sustain so if you're printing above 275 for a long time switch to the copper block because that aluminum will expand and get soft and you'll most likely ruin the threads on it our max bed temp is actually 120 c now for our pid temp so this is just a general pid which um it's basically the best way to describe it it's what the printer uses to figure out how to oscillate the temperature so that way you get a nice stable temp. So uh, my fan will be on the bill of materials. So it's just a Mechatronics super crazy 8000 RPM. Uh, I get it from DigiKey. 
Uh, but this Ultimaker default PID temp is a little off. I do recommend, I highly recommend is one of the first things you do when you get this printer started is um, one, make sure all the axes work correctly. And then number two is to run a PID tune on both the bed and the nozzle. So this is a nozzle PID. This is, I'm just giving a value here. So we're just going to call this SKR version 1.4 Mark 3S. And we're going to change the values to 16.13 to 1.16 and 56.23. So they'll get you started. That's a decent PID. Uh, I'll probably keep you within one degree Celsius, but you can do better. So again, uh, turn the fan on, run a PID. So it's just going to be an M303E0 and then S and then the S you just put your temp in. So I usually say like 210. So S210 and then you do a C, and the number you put after the C is how many times it runs it. I usually do a C8, so it runs the cycle eight times. So M303, E0, S210, C8, and that will do your PID tune for your nozzle. Next is PID tuning the bed. I definitely recommend that. And I do have a new bed here, so SKR, MK3S, uh, version 1.4, we'll do that. And the values for that, we'll just copy and paste this for now. Copy, pasties. Man, those sound delicious. So we have a 126.13. We have a 4.30. And a 924.76. And again, this is just good enough to get you going. We'll uncomment these, so they're gone. They're not defined anymore. This is just to get you going. So again, you can start the printer up. You can run a bed tune, but to do the bed tune, it's the same M303, but you're going to do an E negative one, and that will select the bed because it's, you know, so this is right here. So find your own. Here it is right here, and you would set your bed temp. So again, you would do M303 E negative one. You can do the C or S in any direction, but you can do a C8. I prefer eight and S whatever temperature it is. Uh, Tristan, we pinned it to is working, so we're going to go over that in this version. So we're good here. Cold extrusion temp, you can leave that at 170. Basically, this prevents you from extruding at a certain temp, which is great because that way it won't grind. The only downfall of this 170 is you can't test if your extruder motor is spinning in the correct direction unless you, um, <laughs> unless you uh, uh, set the temperature of your nozzle to 170 or above, so... Downfall, positive. Uh, max extrude length, you could change this. Uh, basically what this does, it prevents you from spinning the dial too far and extruding like 2,000 millimeters of filament. 200 is great, you don't have to change that. We do not have a chamber, so we'll turn off the thermal protection for the chamber. Uh, let me scroll down, make sure I don't need to change any of this stuff. Nope. And stop pull-ups is good, good. Do I need to invert any of this stuff? Uh, nope, no inverting. So here's the next important part. We need to add the stepper drivers where you, yes, I do PID tune with the fan on. So basically it just makes it more stable when the fan is blowing. So you could do it without the fan, but then as soon as the fan kicks in, you could swing half a degree. If you leave the fan on while PID tuning, it tends to be more stable when the fan is blowing at full force, especially if your fan shroud is blowing on your nozzle more than your print. Uh, so the next part here is going to be setting up your drivers. We have... 1x, 1y, 1z, a second z, and an extruder. And make sure you type in the correct driver. And the list is right here. So there's, if I scroll over, there's a TMC 2209. Should be, yep, TMC 2209. Uh, we can just type that in. So TMC 2209. I will copy that magic. And I'll paste that magic all over make it look all nice and pretty so basically we're telling marlin that we have a tmc 2209 driver on the x y z z2 and e0 pin we don't need any end stop interrupts we don't need the end stop noise because we're going to be using uh, <laughs> we're going to be using a feature of the tmc drivers uh called the it's called stall guard but it's basically allows us to crash into the x and y axis just like the Prusa does, instead of having to actually have physical end stops, which is really cool. Uh, and that's in the advanced folder. We'll get there eventually. Everything kind of jumps around. 
which is what makes it so confusing. Um, here's a fun thing. Let's set up our E steps. So we have to do this. So on a Perusa, they use a 1.8 degree motor with a uh, 16 tooth idler on the pulley, or 16 tooth pulley on the motor, which means there's a set step that happens per move, which is going to be 100 on the X, 100 on the Y, a four step is going to be 400, and our E step. So this is going to really depend on what we do later. Uh, I'm going to run this at 32 micro steppings, so a 1.8 degree motor on a BMG, which is a 3 to 1, is going to be 830 E-steps. Our default max feed rates will be 200. And 200, again, you can change these values. These are just what safe values I've found through messing around, and it's confirmed through people like Keith who work with the Marlin project and stuff like that. So uh, we will change our default max accelerations to 2,000 across the X and the Y. 3,000 is still safe. 2,000 is just better. Uh, this is a bed slinger. Um, it definitely has a heavy extruder on there. Uh, 200 on the Z, and you can leave 10,000 on the E. That doesn't matter. Our max accelerations over here are going to be, again, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, and then we are going to not use classic jerk. So one thing that's nice about using 2.0.3 is it does work with um, junction deviation, which basically uses an entirely new value. There's a website you can go to to read more about uh, junction deviation right here in the junction deviation section. Before we get there, we're going to change our default extruder jerk to 3.5 because you still need classic jerk on the extruder. So junction deviation is a nice feature. Basically, it reduces ghosting by taking a rounded tool path instead of hitting a hard corner, but still giving you a nice sharp corner in the print. Uh, this value of 0 0.013 is a very nice safe value. We won't change that, but if you want to, you can head to the, one of these links here. And the bottom one here is the blog.kinetic CNC computing junction deviation. You can actually plug in your values that we used up here to figure out your new junction deviation value. So do that. Uh, S-curve acceleration, of course. Basically that uh, improves our uh, artifacting on long, fast moves. We will definitely enable that. Does our Z-probe use our Z-min pin? Uh, yes, it does. <laughs> sort of. We're going to mess with that. So define Z-min probe uses min s -op. That's fine. We need a probe type of fixed-mounted probe. And because the Pinda is a fixed mounted probe, so don't enable any of these other ones unless you actually have a BL Touch or whatever. But I'll do a specific video on the BL Touch. Uh, ba -ba -ba, I don't need any of this. Ah, here we go. We need to place our probe in space. So on the Prusa, uh, the probe is to the right of the nozzle and slightly behind it. So our, both our values will be positive. Again, we have this nice little cheat sheet right here that shows us where the probe goes. So if your probe is to the left and in front of the nozzle is two negative values, to the left and behind the nozzle is a negative and a positive. So first we're going to plug in our x value, which is to the right. So that's going to be the value number of 23. So it basically says that 23 millimeters from the right of the nozzle we have a probe. And then uh, 5 millimeters behind it boom we have a actually no that's not i don't think that's actually right on this one is it right on this one yeah that's right on this one i have both a bl touch on one and a pinda on the other so it gets confusing when i don't have the values in front of me but this looks to be correct all right let's scroll back up i don't want to miss any of these settings for you guys because they're all very important and i just zoomed to the top to make sure i was on the right uh right folder here so I lost my place but um, we're gonna keep an edge of and again this edge setting here just defines how close will that probe get to the edge of the bed and we're gonna go with 20 millimeters that way it doesn't get any closer than 20 millimeters to the edge our probe speed is gonna be 10,000 for X and Y our homing feed rate of Z is actually going to be in a multiple. So we're going to actually do homing feed rate of whatever we set to times 4. 
I'm going to put that in the bracket. So now it's math. So basically our fast probing speed is going to be the homing feed rate of the Z times 4. And then we can leave this fast, which is actually the slow, as half. So it's actually be half of that. So nice math. You can use math in this. This is really cool. We will, of course, define in multiple probing. And I like to do an extra probe. So basically we'll do three probes per point and kick out one of the probe points that's the furthest away from the happiness. Now, to make this go quickly, because you only need to have so much clearance, we're going to set our Z clearance to 2 millimeters, our clearance between probes to 2 millimeters, and our clearance between multi, multiple probes to 2 millimeters. And um, we're going to set our low point to negative 2. That's fine. Hey, we got Carl, and we got the 3D printing Viking. Range is good. We definitely want to enable the Z-min probe repeatability test. So this allows us to test a single point multiple times. It'll tell you how accurate your probe is per uh, probe, basically. It's kind of neat. Definitely enable anything that lets us know that it works or doesn't work. Uh, we leave this as this. We will leave this as this. And we will leave all of this, except for I believe the extruder is going to turn to true. Uh, let me actually check that in another configuration because I might be wrong. But this will definitely change for some people depending on how you have it wired and depending on what motor you have because some motors move left in its normal orientation or right in its normal orientation. So I'm going to leave this as false. I'm just going to leave it stock as it is. And later today when I plug it in, I'll go back and change it. So again, this will de definitely depend on what motor you have installed. So... Um, on this printer, I have the stock Bontech motor, and I actually have never used that stock motor with stock Marlin before, so I have no idea what it's going to pump out. So we'll leave that there as it is. Very easy to change later on. So basically, when you start your printer up, one of the first things you want to do is just move the axis. So you're going to go to like move, move X 10 millimeters, move Y 10 millimeters, move Z 10 millimeters, then heat up your nozzle, and then change your direction or move your extruder and make sure they're all moving in the correct directions. Uh, that's step one. <laughs> so uh, check that and then you'll basically flip these. So if your X is moving the wrong way, you change that to true, so on and so forth. Um, let's see here. We don't need to change any of this, but we do need to get to the size of the print bed. So our print bed size is actually 255 in the X and 212.5 in the Y. Our X min position stays the same. Our Y min position is actually negative 4. Uh, max size is max size. And then our Z height is 210. So if you had a taller printer, so if you were building this from scratch and your Prusa was 320 millimeters, or if you had a Zerabo 320, uh, you would just change that value to 320. Good to go. Software end stops. We will undefine software end stops for the Z. And we will define the soft end stops menu and filament runout sensor we have this working so we'll define the filament runout sensor our inverting is actually backwards so we're going to set that to true basically when what this means is on how the prusa filament sensor works is when the filament is in the trigger is triggered so the filament sensor is triggered so you need to flip the value to true and then when it the filament is run out or it misses a beat you know like there's no filament there and it's it it opens the trigger open having it open which is typically is, is its new closed so uh, we definitely need this script here and then i like to give it a for sure so basically what this will do is it'll run for uh if once it's triggered it'll run for two more millimeters before it triggers a run out and basically that's just a safety precaution because let's say there's just a hiccup like there's a, a quick blip and it and the sensor actually didn't sense anything but it felt like it did or some some kind of magic polar vortex happened and your sensor triggers but it's only for a split second it won't initiate the run out it'll actually run for two full millimeters which is fine it won't go past the bond tech gears or anything and then if for two millimeters it's continued to be triggered it will then start the uh filament sensor um, removal of the filament so pretty cool so we will get this enabled that's also some more magic uh, bed leveling oh boy good stuff here we only use bilinear bed leveling so we're going to go ahead and define auto bed leveling bilinear 
we're definitely going to restore leveling after G20. So basically we can do a bed leveling from the screen and then we can uh, use G28 in our start starting script on our G code. And that will just use the saved bed level. So we don't have to bed level every single time we print. Pretty neat feature. Uh, let's see, do we enable the debug? No, we don't enable the debug, but we do enable fade height and we will also do a G26 mesh validation. So this will basically allow us to go in and mess around with stuff. And anything else? Oh yeah, we gotta change the probing. So you can change your probing to whatever you want. I use seven by seven. Um, you can use five by five, you can use three by three, you can use 11 by 11, you can try 24 by 24. Uh, eventually you'll hit a number that will make the make Marlin freak out. So seven by seven safe and it's fast. Um, five by five, I, I prefer the speed of that, but whatever. Strap up beyond grid. Nope, nope. Let's see. Anything else in here? I don't think we need anything else. I think we're going to go ahead and skip to the section of define LCD bed leveling. So we can have that menu there. And we can edit the mesh. And we'll do a mesh editing. So if a part isn't low enough or isn't high enough, you can edit it from the screen. We definitely want that. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. Homing, we definitely need this. So Prusa has a, to keep it Prusa, the homing is actually a little bit different, but homing is zero and Y of negative 2.2 and a home position on the Z of 0.2 and Z safe homing. So that's a cool feature. Basically, it makes you probe from the dead center of the bed, as you can see, so to find Z safe homing, the X point will be the X bed divided by two and the Y bed divided by two. So it just basically probes dead center. Um, homing end stops, good. We don't do skew compensation. You can enable this. There's a website you go to to print this object to do skew calibration. It's not, it's not that, it's, yeah. We definitely want EEPROM settings. So basically EEPROM is gonna be our kind of save states. So if you change like an M92, um, uh, like saving the new E steps, like so you uh, do an extruder calibration, you can save that into EEPROM. We want that stuff. Ooh, good question. So Carl from White Knight says, can I do that in Duet and make it so it doesn't kick in after two millimeters? I have no clue. I am, I am even worse with duet than I am Marlin, which is hard to believe because I'm not good at either. So <laughs> <laughs> these host keep alive settings are great. Uh, one of the things I do change is I don't print a lot of ABS. So as you can see, I've got a preheat label PLA. My PLA bed temp is more like 60 and my ABS is going to switch to pet. And my 110 bed is going to go to 80 bed because that's where I print my PETG. So you can change whatever. Uh, they're going to work on having more preheat pre constants versus these two. Um, you can mess around and add more than two. You have to go through a bunch of other stuff. So uh, maybe I'll do another video on that once I learn that. We definitely need nozzle park because that's going to allow us to do things like, you know, parking the nozzle when we want to do a filament change. Uh, we don't change any of the values here at all. Well, we don't have any cleaning machine here, so we can get rid of the nozzle cleaning stuff. Print job timer. One of the things I do like to add is the print counter. So basically it keeps track of how many prints you've done, how much filament you've used. It's kind of neat. There's another section I have to enable in the advanced section for that. LCD is a yes and yes and um, classic is fine. We'd, what's funny about Marlin is the SD card is not supported out of the get-go. So definitely define SD support. Um, keep scrolling. What else do I need? There's something. It's a section that I'm familiar with, but not super familiar with. Uh, encoder pulses, keep it Prusa-like uh, direction. So if you have a directional change, like let's say that you don't like the way the encoder is moving, just change that here. You can define and undefine reverse encoder direction, line 1708. Um, next up is individual axis homing. That way I can home the X or home the Y. This helps you when you're testing things because we're going to be using stall guard for the uh, basically sensorless homing on the X and Y. So this is a good way to test. So if your values aren't good, you can mess with them here. We will define the speaker. If you don't want the speaker, just leave it undefined. Uh, in the LCD controls, we will definitely include the RepRap Discount Smart Controller because that is what a Prusa uses. 
scroll down scroll down there's nothing else we need from here so we're just gonna go ahead and skip to the advanced section and that's not really advanced it's just the advanced section <laughs> um, there's a lot we're changing here and there might be things I miss so I have to go really slow so I'm gonna go slow this time I missed some stuff last time we're gonna try not miss stuff here so we don't need any of this um, we're getting close to something we need. Here we go. So going back to that first section we changed where instead of getting false positives for your bed heating when the fan kicks in, I like to change this to 8. And again, don't change these values too high. If you, if you push these values too high, it may not catch a real thermal issue. So, you know, 8 degrees if it swings in one direction is not bad when the fan kicks in. It's not the best. Uh, but there's still a timer. So if it's, if it's between eight degrees less than it should be for 40 seconds, it kicks in the thermal runaway. So you should have your heater PID tuned correctly so that way you're not below eight degrees Celsius for more than 40 seconds. So it's still gonna work, it's still gonna catch your errors, but um, I just change everything to eight because I was getting po false positives because my fan is an extremely powerful fan. You know, you don't have to change these, you can leave them at two, but I prefer to leave them at eight because Getting false positive sucks, especially when you don't know what it is, and 99% of the time it's because your fan kicks in or a window's open and it blows on your bed, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, well, it dropped like four degrees and it kicked in thermal runaway when there really wasn't an issue. It's not going to cause your house to burn down if that happens. Um, enable PID temp scaling. No. No, we don't need any of this stuff. It's not cool at all. High temperature thermistor support. We don't need any of that. We don't need any of that. Enable your runout prevent. Uh, nope. Temp sensor. Uh, nope. Controller fan. Nope. Nope. Fan key. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. There ain't nothing. We're doing good. We're, we're getting rid of all the stuff we don't need. Now, one thing that you do have to do on this board. Um, let me make sure I write the right code in here because I have done it incorrectly before. So there's two ways you can run your auto fan. Um, one is you don't have to use the auto fan. You can plug it into any of the fan ports. And we're specifically talking about the 40 millimeter fan on Prusa. That's on the extruder pointing into the hot end, cooling the hot end. Not the one that's cooling the prints, not the one that might trigger a bed um, or nozzle or hot end thermal runaway, but the one that's actually cooling the, fa uh, the, the heat, uh, heat sink on the extruder. So I enable this. You can leave this at negative one uh, the way I do it, but I like to show everyone that there's two ways of doing this, and that's using pin P2 underscore 04 as the pin. And you'll find that by uh, going to the Big Tree Tech. I have a GitHub. There's a link to the GitHub with everything on the bottom left corner. I hope that's showing up. Um, I can't actually see what my screen is showing you. But uh, basically, you can plug it into the second heater cartridge port instead of uh, heating at 50 degrees Celsius since this is enabled as an auto fan it'll kick on the fan just like your Prusa does so basically the fan is off until you heat the nozzle or you can plug it into the always on port which is all the other fan ports so uh, yeah go ahead and add that and you would then again insert your fan into the second heater cartridge port not a big deal and then again here's when your auto fan temperature kicks in which is 50 degrees Celsius at max speed so uh, pretty simple uh, part cooling, multiplexer, nope. Homing, nope. We don't need any of this late Z. Ooh, dual end stops, nope. But we do have to do dual Z. So right here we've got two Z steppers, which is really cool. Again, you can run this off of one Z stepper uh, uh, driver, but there's a cool feature we're going to enable here in a second. Scrolling down, dual X carriage we don't have. Nope, dual X carriage. Nope, here's our bumping. So because we're using sensorless homing, the bumping on the Prusa worked better. The bumping on Marlin 2.0 does not work as good. So we're going to set our bump to zero, zero, and our bump on the Z can also be zero, but I'll leave it at two. Uh, our bump divisor doesn't really matter. We'll define quick home, which means we'll move it in X and Y at the same time. But I also define the homing back off. So... We'll leave it at two millimeters. So basically, it'll bump and then move two millimeters off the axis. That way, it's not pinned up against there. Because one of the things I always hate is when the extruder is pinned far left and then it's moving up and down as close. I want it just off the axis. So 
If you want your home to back off five millimeters or whatever, two is fine. It's just something that I do. It's not major. Uh, it does mimic what Prusa does. Theirs comes off the axis a little bit. So, uh, anything else I want to change here? Nope, that should be good. Next stuff is BL Touch stuff, so we can ignore everything that's BL Touch related because we don't have one of those. Ah, here we go. Dual st defined Z stepper auto line. So basically, what this does is it will probe as close to the left motor, the Z axis motor, and as close to the right Z axis motor, and level the gantry to the bed skew. So, super cool feature. How to do it is basically delete this whole third motor here because we only have two motors. And we're going to plug a few values in here. So our first value is, again, we can only get as close to as 35 millimeters onto the left Z, which is our Z1. And 105 millimeters is close to the dead center of the bed. And then we'll do 235, which is close we can get to the right uh, Z motor. And 105, which is center of the bed. <laughs> Hey, what's up, Robo UK? Uh, I am not a Marlin guru. I just I can do this board. <laughs> so let's see. No, we don't need any of that stuff. One amp is fine. I do four iterations now. That seems to work good. Um, basically, I'll probe the left Z axis one time, then go over to the Z on the right hand side, and then blah blah blah. Yep, it it fixes stuff. It's really cool. So basically, it levels your gantry to your bed. They use this typically on bigger beds. Um, because if there's a little skew, it could be way off, but basically it, it helps your prints and I like it. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that on. You guys should totally leave that on. It's the best ever. Uh, multi-zone. Nope. We'll leave those all false default. Uh, oh, deactivation time. We should never allow the Z axis to deactivate. So we'll hit the false button there. Uh, basically there's a timeout. So after like 120 seconds, the X, Y, and the extruder motors will deactivate, so it won't be locked in place. But the Z should stay locked in place because you don't want to actually bump it and lower one side and all that nonsense. So we don't want to do that. That's why it's there. Backlash compensation is something I want to mess with, but I haven't yet. Haven't messed with the calibration codes yet, or G codes yet, which sound really cool. One of the things that we do to make better prints is to define app. Uh, adaptive step smoothing and all that does is does some magic so that way uh, there'll be less surface artifacts and vibration literally on my skr printers i can touch my finger the printer and when it's moving i don't feel any vibration so pretty awesome this section we ignore this section we ignore no ignore Let's see. Ah, define LCD info menu. This is something I always miss. Definitely enable the info menu. So this will tell you what board you have and all that fun stuff. But when you have the section that tells you your prints and how many prints you've done and how much filament you used, it's in that. So if you don't enable this, you can't find it. Turbo back button. Nope. We don't have any LED control. <coughs> we definitely want to leave this alone and scroll down. There's something else I know. Let me make sure it's not anything in here. Nope. Um, yeah, we can do an LCD timeout to... Um, so this will basically go from your... If you're in a menu after this amount of time, it'll shoot you back to the main menu. That's fine. We will enable that. Um, SD finish release command. Let's see here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. SD confirm start. No, nope, no nope. power loss. We don't have power loss working yet. I just got the board for that. Um, SD sort file listing. Nope. Ah, scroll long file names. We definitely want that one. So basically, it'll show us on a long name. We'll scroll through. We definitely want that one. SD. Nope. 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 Mm-mm. Nope. Nope. SD support. Nope. We don't have a graphical LCD, but they are so cool. I definitely recommend them since you can put whatever screen you want. Now they're using stock Marlin. Don't need any of this. This is where it gets boring. I got to find the next thing. Watchdog. Baby stepping. We need this. So basically, uh, if you have a Prusa you're used to Live Z, this is your Live Z. It's baby stepping. So we need baby stepping. And uh, we can define double clicks. That way you just double click your. Um, 
your your button on your screen will send you the the you know whatever your baby stepping mode and we also wanted to find combining our baby step with our z probe offset so that way it stays so when we set our z probe offset or your baby stepping value it's it's saved so that's all we need to do there but that's your live z we've just enabled live z we definitely want linear advance enabled because linear advance is awesome Helps us get nice sharp corners and better retractions, and we set it to all zeros for now. We will control the linear advance values with our start G code. Let's see here. Leveling, no. No. Mm -mm. No. Let's make sure I'm not missing anything. I've got my little cheat sheet on my left here. Um, yep, here's our. Since we enabled our thermal probe compensation, that's all in here. So it's going to use all the fancy stuff. We don't need any of that. We don't ch well, we don't change any of that. We need it. We're not going to change any of it. Um, TMC driver stuff is good. That's all auto. Buffers. Yes, we need to change things in the buffers. So let me scroll to my cheat sheet. So working with Keith Bennett, and he's like, dude, we need to change some things in the buffers. This makes everything work faster on the screen. So our buffer size, you don't have to change any of these, but they work. So 32 here, 32 here, 96 buff size is going to go to 32 over here. See you, Mr. Um, Carl. You have a good one. Ooh, Tristan says change baby to X10. I, I leave it with the crazy value. I don't know. I'll mess with it later. That's just me. But you can change that to whatever value you want on baby stepping for how fine you want the baby stepping to be. Um, okay, good, good, no, don't need any dish, no firmer retract, and this, ah, pause features, we need this, so this basically will allow us to have a retraction and all this pause feature nonsense, so if you have a filament run out and whatever, you need to have this, so, let's change the values, so the park retract feed rate is 60, length is 2, we're going to change the unload feed rate to 100 millimeters per second, um, unload length is going to be 100 millimeters. That's totally fine. Uh, we're going to set our load feed rate to 2. It's a nice slow speed to feed in there. For, for we'll do 60 millimeters. And 625 and 0 is correct here. Oh, nope, 625 and 60. So there's a load length that's going to be fast. And three, and this is going to be 60. And we have the zero value. And our retract length for purging is going to be a five. 825 is correct, 45 and 10. We also want to do a park head on pause. So we're going to define that. And we're going to home before filament change. That's good. And filament load and unload G codes, we definitely want that. Hey, what's up, Pete C? Ah, oh, you're not really late. Um, <laughs> but this time, at least I can see the chat, and this time I have the, the text bigger. So I should be able to see it better. And I think I'm, f I'm not missing anything this time. So we need to hurry up and get to our TMC section here, which is next. So with the stock motors, I have values here. So let's see here. Our X value for a stock stepper is going to be 500 with a homing current of 350. Micro stepping at 16 is perfectly fine. Uh, our Y axis motor current is going to be 600 with a homing current of 350 at 16 micro stepping. Our Z-axis current is going to be 550 on Z1 and Z2. Everything else can stay the same. And then our extruder, which remember we're doing a BMG extruder. Um, it is a just under 1 amp, so 500. And we're going to go to 32 micro-stepping because we can. Yeah, it, you know, it, so far it's worked for me, and we can, yeah, 
you know, maybe you won't do a homing between. You know what? We won't. We'll disable. That's actually a good call. Uh, Tristan actually said um, home before filament change. Let's go ahead and remove that. We are using senseless homing. Sometimes that can be tricky. So um, that's a great, great idea. So let's go ahead and we're going to disable the home before filament change. Uh, so if you followed along, I apologize, but that's actually a better move um, than what I had. So let's see here. This is all good. This is all good. Stealth chop is great. We want that enabled on everything. We're going to change our timing to the 24 volt timing. So chopper timing set to chopper default 24 volt. Uh, you could use the Mark III one here, but... It works fine on both. Uh, we definitely want to monitor our driver status. And our thresholds don't matter. Stall guard. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> for the TMC 2209, stall guard is 0 to 255. And we're going to go ahead and enable sensorless homing. So highest sensitivity is higher. Lowest sensitivity is lower. Too insensitive, it won't trigger. Too sensitive, you'll get false positives. Um, with the 1.8 degree motors, it's actually uh, pretty easy to set this. So uh, all we need is sensuous homing on the X and the Y. Um, why is there X2 and X? I don't know. So we're going to set this to 100 and 100, and that tends to work pretty good. You can tune this a little bit more. Uh, there's actually a TMC menu. You go to configuration and then advanced then TMC. And you can adjust these values up and down. So square wave stepping, definitely enable square wave stepping. TMC debug, definitely enable um, the TMC debug. And I think that's it. This is literally everything we need to do here. Yep, let me check one thing. Let me make sure I put the right drivers in the right spot. For some reason, it was showing me an X2, and it shouldn't show me an X2. It should show me a Z2, and I didn't get another error for that, but we'll find out if I did that correctly or not. So, you can always double-check your work. It's okay. Yeah, so if X, Y, I don't have an X2, a Z2, and an E0. And when I go over here to look at the fancy... Um, ooh, filament with sensor. Let me go back up here to the Trinamic Nonsense... So, yep, we have Stalgar only on the X and the Y, and we have Stealth Chop on, excuse me, on X, Y, Z, and the Extruder, which is perfectly fine. So we have to do some changes in here to allow us to do some fancy things. So filament runout sensor, we enabled. But to use the Pinda, we have to do some stuff. So let's go back here and talk about this. So this is the difficult part. So... Um, I have tried to use this Z min probe pin and change the pin, and that just does not work. So you have to redefine the Z min probe because the way we have it wired, let me actually, let's hop on the internet and show you how I have it wired. So let's go ahead and hop over to github.com. We'll go to my GitHub. We'll make that full screen. I'll zoom in. And so here's the little firmware that we're working with. And we have a wiring guide. Let's scroll down here. So when we wire the Pinda, uh, we actually, <laughs> it's kind of fun wiring the Pinda too. We steal 5 volt from the Z min end stop. We use the probe pin here for the blue and the signal. So ground and signal are here. And the thermistor is, is the thermistor 10.23 port. So uh, we have to split the four wires from the Pinda 2 pretty awkwardly. I believe I can steal from the servo pin. Uh, it's 5 volt. So it's got uh, servo. We got N power right here, which is also 5 volt. So I don't have to steal it from here. But it works. I mean, you can steal it from here, here. That's not the point. The point is um, you are going to take 5 volt from here, blue, white, and we're going to change it to probe. So I had issues using the Z min end stop because that means I have to cut the uh, diagnostic pins off of the Z uh, motor. Z's driver, so from E1 and Z. I don't want to do that. So basically I remapped it in Marlin, so that way it uses the probe pin, and for some reason it doesn't automatically do that when I want it. I actually have to go in and change things. So, yeah, let's go and do that. So basically we need to go to library. No, not library. We need to go to 
to... Oh, source. Here it is. We go to source. No, it is library. Let's see. Library. No, it is source. Source and pins and LPC 1769 and SKR 1.4 turbo. So it's going to use... Um, so yeah, it looks like it's going to just use the regular SKR pins. So that's good. So we go back to LPC 1768 and we use the regular pins here. And here is where the issue is. So it says the Z Min Pro pin is P010. And it says that the, let me think here. This is always fun to do. Um, power loss. Uh, where's the, yeah, so Z Probe is P0. And Z Stop pin is 127. So basically, we're going to copy P010. And we're going to reroute the Z min end stop pin to that. So, uh, and we'll double check that. So we'll just hop over to my little cheat sheets here. And boom, here's a stock mark three. Here's the pins thing. And we'll scroll down. Yeah, so we just change your Z stop to uh, be our min probe. I don't know why it doesn't work the other way. I mean, I tried it and it just would not work. But when I map everything to here, and again, I know why it doesn't work. It's because the... Uh, there's a little weird thing with SKR. Um, why am I going back to this one? Go back to this one. So the SKR, again, you can just remove the diagnostic pins off of the Z-steppers, which is kind of poopy. I mean, you can use a... Um, I have it in the guide here. Let me go back to the guide since I did such a beautiful job on that wiring guide. Um, boom. Wiring guide. I even have that in there. So if you want to use the, again, for filament runout sensor and stuff, you have to do this. But for the filament runout sensor, uh, you have to trim this. Or what a lot of people do is they'll just heat it up with the soldering iron and push this pin all the way through. Because a diagnostic pin blocks the use of any of these pins. So if you use sensorless homing and that diagnostic pin is enabled and it's, it's actually, you know, in here. Uh, you can't use any of these pins. It just ignores it. On the version 1.3, you had jumpers. And the jumpers will allow you to use this and ignore the diagnostic pin. So it's a weird trade-off. So you basically just take a soldering iron to the pin on the other side and push the pin through. Or you can snip it. I mean, again, you don't need this diagnostic pin. You don't need uh, sensorless homing on the Z or on the extruder. So... For me, on the extruder, I had to remove the pin, and then you wire the filament runout sensor like so. So you'd put 5-volt red on the 5-volt, and then the ground is black on the 5-volt. And you can, on the ground, you can see ground here. And then the signal, which is white, I have a gray line, but because white wouldn't show up. But the white would uh, connect to the signal, which is the 126 pin. So that is how your extruder filament detection works. So I'm guessing... Um, if you find issues, definitely check your diagnostic pin uh, if you're trying to use any of these things. So uh, when you use the uh, BL Touch, you don't have to do any of that. Uh, you do have to change your Z min pin, but you just plug it into the servo. You don't need to cut anything. You don't need to change anything. You don't need to do any diagnostic pins. You just plug it into the servo and probe pin, and you're good to go. So that's your lesson for the day. <laughs> But this should compile. Let me just double check in my brain. I think this should compile. I've never done this for these 1769 boards. So we'll see if there's any bugs. We'll hit the compile button. It's this big check mark down here by the home button. And it's doing its magic. So we'll see if it kicks in anything. Um, and I will be testing this firmware here shortly on the printer next to me. We'll, we'll do that, but... This is always the fun stuff. So usually I get an error saying like, hey, you don't have path IO, whatever, whatever built. So it, it skipped that, which is good. Um, I think at this point I'm doing pretty good. Um, and then uh, coming up soon will be videos on using uh, installing a BL Touch separately. There'll be a video on the TFT 3.5 screen. Uh, but yeah, I hope I just, I'm getting better at this. So I figured I would, um, you know, get more info out there and basically this is a replacement to the other video i did on setting up marlin for the sk 1.4 i'll do another one on this the 1.4 so you don't have to do this but it's the same thing like if you just go back to the first video or the beginning of this video and just choose um 
LPC 1768 from your uh, platform IO full. Yeah, it built on the first try. That's really good. Uh, so if you go to your platform IO INI instead of LPC 1769, if you want to use the SKR 14 non turbo, you just change that to the LPC 1768. And then you'll go to configuration.h. You'll scroll up here. And from your boards, you'll just delete the word turbo and the underscore here. So pretty simple if you want to. And you also change the names and stuff. But that's it. I mean, that's all you have to do to set it up and build. And I built it on the first try, which is amazing. Um, so if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. But I think I went through all the stuff and explained why we picked the things we were picking. And um, it built correctly. So it should work correctly. Um, so I'll run it on this printer. Actually, let me go back to the regular screen. So let me let me go to main. Hey, it's me. <laughs> My cheat sheet. Oh, no, I'd skip frames on here. How possible is that? What's up, Brian Weber? Yeah, that should be it. This is a nice print I just got off of the printer behind me that has there. 0 0.1 millimeter layer height and even with the downward lighting i mean it's super clean this was a 16 hour print so um the code for waiting for pinda is in there so you can set that um if you like the temp chart is in there so you don't really need it so basically um you know it knows how to compensate for it I don't ever use the temp thing anymore because it has the chart that will be like, hey, um, I know what to compensate for for my accuracy. And, I mean, the printer behind me is the one with the – no, that's the BL Touch. The purple one behind me has the pin to probe in it. It's consistent every single time, and I have, I'll print it right after with a hot bed and the print, pin is warm, or I'll print it stone cold in the morning, um, and the bed is still flat. So um, other than that, yeah. Um, yeah, I wish Arduino ID looked this cool. Yeah, you know, I actually kind of preferred it, but I'm getting better at it. So the more I mess with it, the more I'm forced to do with this stuff, uh, the more I am. But, um, yeah. Yeah, the Gorilla looks awesome. Like, that is one of the cleanest prints. Again, it's got sparkly filament in there, so it's definitely hiding some of the flaws. But it's really clean. Um, really, really clean. So my goal now is to... Um, pull this printer apart well not pull it all apart just pop the case off i have a brand new case printed i have an skr 14 turbo to put firmware on so and i guess i'll show you that i, I probably should have done that right away um let me go to a blank blank screen here and we'll go to here and we'll go to screen capture all right so now that we're screen capturing again uh, here's our Turbo BMG 1.8. I'll pull the SD card out of the board. And I bought a really nice USB 3.0 card reader. So I added a new removable disc, and you can show up here in G, and it's doing some Windows math in the background. But we'll go to the SKR 1.4 Turbo that we just made, and our Marlin, and PIO, and builds, and LPC 1769, and boom, firmware.bin 629. Heck yeah, that was the one that we built. And all you're going to do is drag that to our removable drive. And we're going to delete the .cur. Yes. Hit back. And as someone who works in the photography industry, I never just remove the SD card. I will always eject. That makes sure there's no writing and stuff going on. So we'll pull that out, and we'll insert the firmware SD card back into that magic. Boom. And boom. So let me do the overhead. That way I can show you. Overhead. So on the overhead, you can see there's an SD card slot right here. So this is where the firmware goes, and you stick that back in there, and boom. Boom. You've now loaded your firmware, and what's really cool is when you um, when you turn on your printer, it literally just has a blank screen for a second, and then it says Marlin, and that's it. There's no, like, loading. It's super fast. It just converts that firmware file into whatever it needs to do. So 
Um, yeah, that's it. That's that's the day. That I hope we did that. I don't even know how long we went for. I don't have a timer. Oh, we went for an hour. This is perfect. So the last one went for an hour. This one went for an hour. So I hope this helps you uh, in coding your SKR 1.4 or turbo version. This is the turbo again. Uh, again, either one's fine. Uh, I think that there's a lower price on the turbo at the moment. You can get the turbo with five TMC 2209s for like 65 bucks on Amazon. Which is a heck of a deal. So you get the best drivers on the market right now besides the 5160s. And one of the best boards on the market right now um, for Stock Marlin. So that's it. That's all. Everyone have a great day. I'll be back with a video on how to do just the BL Touch. So I'll probably just edit this firmware, remove some things, and show you how to do the BL Touch. And then we will... Um, I'll do another one on the Power Panic and something else i'll do little things on the little things that are harder to do so i believe you should be able to use an skr on the ulti maker so yeah I, the the unfortunately the pro anything that uses the stm 32-bit chips is a little bit um uh, let me think here they're a little bit under unstable at the moment uh the coding is not as easy as it would be on these LPC chips. They're definitely more stable. Again, this is the LPC 1769, so it's 120 megahertz. That's more than, more than enough. Um, if you really want to get a board that's super powerful and stable right now, uh, you get the Panda Pi, which is, you, it's, you take a Pi, uh, 3B or whatever, and then you plug the hat on it, and the hat takes the stepper drivers, and it acts like a Marlin board. So, Oh, yeah, we'll do a video on setting up Wi-Fi on here. Forgot this has Wi-Fi capabilities, so we'll do some jumpers and some magic for the Wi-Fi. Um, TFT 3.5 screen. Um, yeah, that should be it. And then I'll do a video just on where to plug everything in, but I do have the cheat sheet, so head to the head to the GitHub link down down here, down down there. There's a GitHub link. And there's, there's a whole... I mean, I've... The wiring guide's all there. So everything you need to do to wire, it's all there. Um, and then there will be a BOM coming soon. I still still.